Hello again. And uh, welcome back by Alessandro. And Abe. So this is the part of the somehow series where we improvise and we are going to improvise with uh, a shade style and stuff like this. OK, yeah. So you can see that there is almost nothing uh, that we have prepared apart a render target because yeah. we want to make use of that. One, and, uh, one new thing there is that yes. we are using a type uh, with more precision than the default. Exactly. This is actually very important when you do things like fades and trails mm -hmm. to clean uh, completely the screen to, to somehow reduce the amount of information to zero. Mm -hmm. You really need this higher precision because otherwise you can run the risk of having artifacts yeah. left on the screen. Is that the default mode has 256 levels exactly, exactly of what, brightness. Exactly. What this goes to float yeah, uh, position. What, whatever millions. Yes. <laughs> okay, super. So what are the things that we are gonna I, I feel like having a curve. Yeah. A contour. Let's make a contour. Let's make a contour. Okay. C okay. is um mm -hmm. maybe a circle in the center first or do we make it a wobble? No, let's make let's make some some weird <laughs> thing. Like we can uh, let's generate some random uh, points. Uh-huh. List. And then hobbyify the like get an hobby curve up List. to that with six or uh, I'm gonna try one thing. Uh, these are gonna be uniform from drawer bound uniform. We have those points mm -hmm. and make it ooh, closed. close through. And I'm gonna draw that mm -hmm. drawer contour. Now it should we should get a red curve, right? Um, Is it correct? Yes. Yeah. But and, no fill. And I, there's one thing I wanted oh. to fix because we have these weird overlaps. Yes. So we could sort them. Ah, yeah, that's true. Sorted by. By what? Uh, distance to the center? No. no. The polar, Almost. the angle. Ah, the theta. Ah, um, I yeah. see, see, I so see. So if we do a polar mm -hmm. from vector it. Mm. And this is the mm. theta. And Why don't we generate already the theta sorted? Uh, how? Like for instead of ah. doing a list? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I learned this trick from you. Yeah. Like you generate like n points yeah. from uh, 0 to, to 1. Oh, the, I mean, to 0 angles. to 100. Yeah. yeah. You sort them and then mm -hmm. you map. Yeah, that works better. Yeah, that works better. So <laughs> we want random. Double zero three sixty. So there we have ten different angles. Yeah, let's but let's call this list angles. Ah, uh, 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 you want to sort well, them? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I okay. Ball angles is mm -hmm. those numbers. Yes. Which but we sort. Uh, can we do that sorted? here? Sorted. Yeah, and then map, and then no, 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 and then we can use these. Uh, of course, now it's complaining because I tried mm -hmm. to run the program. Yeah. Uh, we want to map those. So angles dot map. Angles dot map. Polar. And we make polar. And you pass it as the angle, and uh, the then is the radius. Then there is the radius. We, we can, can do can randomize a random bit. double between right fifty and I don't know right. two hundred. Cartesian. Can, yeah. And move it to the center. So because we here we create a polar coordinate, yeah. we Cartesian Cartesian. Now then you have to uh, let's add the center vector because otherwise this yeah. will be centered yeah. here. Okay. Mm, plus drawer dot bounds. Drawer bounds dot center. center. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> and we can increase make, a bit. Make it a bit more extreme. But you see now we avoided yeah. having those weird overlapping exactly. parts. Well, maybe. I'm going to keep it a bit smaller. And mm -hmm. now, should we do a hobby curve out yes. of this? Hobby curve. But now <laughs> I want to show. Now I want to show something. Yeah. Like, uh, put put the, the the stroke to white. Okay. Mm -hmm. Drawer no. dot stroke dot white. Color white. Yeah, and then put fill to to null. Mm -hmm. Drawer. Fill null. Why are we left with a white, uh, you know, border uh -huh. if we said that there is a red there? 
Right, because we are using here X fill. Exactly. So we are overwriting. Instead of X exactly. stroke. Perfect. So when you work with contours in the, um, and uh, like curves, mm -hmm. the, uh, correct, the right variable to modify in the shade style in the fragment transform is stroke, mm -hmm. not uh, RGB. Okay. And so it's very cool that we can make it change. We don't have to make a constant color. Exactly. So yeah. what we can do, uh, we could, um, well, I mean, we could keep track of the, um, like the the position from the contour. Mm -hmm. But notice now that this is not normalized. Uh huh. Right. So we have to pass the length we of need, the contour yeah. and divide. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why does that happen? Uh, if we pass here the contour position. Mm -hmm. This number might be up to 300. Yeah, this is jagged. Probably will get white. Yeah, so everything except the first mm -hmm. uh, exactly. pixel is going to be white. white. Yeah, exactly. So we need to divide oops, by the length. Yeah, let's define a variable called t, a float variable called, called t, and then we have to pass the length as a, a, a variable, right? Uh, uh, wait, where well, length? How? I was thinking of here, we calculate the length of the curve. Yeah. Or? Length yeah. is C dot length. And, and we then we have to pass it as yeah. a parameter. Yeah, yeah perfect. Uh, we can pass it. Mm -hmm. Is it here? Yeah, uh, yeah, you can do it uh, here. Parameter. Ah, no, wait, but this, yeah, yeah, you can do it here length. because the, the curve is static at the moment. Yeah. And we pass. Length. And call it length, yeah. Fantastic. So you can see that the curve is mm. shading. Okay. Yeah. So what I was suggesting it was just inside the frame trans uh, fragment transform uh -huh. to uh, define a float t. Yeah. With this c contour position uh -huh. divided by yeah. land. Yeah. So it's a bit re more readable. Yeah. And what we can do now, we can use this t as a mixing variable. Now remember that t, t goes from zero to one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can already have an intuition that the you will not see you will not close well how to say mm -hmm. like you know you will have a jump yeah because if the curve is close but yeah. we will ignore this at the moment but let's use t as a mixing parameter <laughs> yes sorry i i'm here playing with yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's use these for instance let's use a sign of t uh -huh. just to show that you can do basically almost uh oh. Like with a high frequency, you can do almost dashing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how do you do the perfect dashing? If you put step, mm -hmm. put step, put a threshold. If the sign is above, it uh -huh. gives you one. If it's below, but I like this already. I want to make it move. Ah, let's, you want uh, to make it move. Let's pass the time. Okay, let's pass the time. Perfect. Effect parameter uh, time seconds. And now we can just throw in here p time. Is that here? Yes. Yeah. And then you can see that this very nice. You we, we you know we have this very nice moving effect. Okay. Yeah. Nothing yeah. nothing is moving at this moment no. technically. Yeah. Everything is there. It's just our things are rendered that yeah. gives the illusion. Yeah. I mean, as many things, this is also an illusion. Um, <laughs> But we can use T as a mixing variable uh, to mix the color between, you know. Mm -hmm. So we can define basically, uh, we can define maybe a, a variable called call for color. And we use uh, that call is the mix between two colors. Vec3 call yeah. is mix. I don't know, be between, I don't know, blue and red. or Vec3 yeah. and Vec3 mm -hmm. and T. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that in various lines. Uh, so one was going to be kind of orange. Mm -hmm. And the other is going to be a dark blue. Mm -hmm. uh, orange and blue works always uh, very well. 0 0.1, mm -hmm. 0 0.3 maybe. Is that blue? Yes. Yeah, it's fine. And you can see that, you know, that there is the discontinuity. Yeah. At the beginning, this can be solved in multiple ways. Yeah. Um, you just basically have to, instead of using a zero one shear zero one, mm -hmm. you take a function of zero one 
that goes from zero to zero. Yeah. Like, I don't know, sine or... We can do t times two mm -hmm. uh, and minus one mm -hmm. and the absolute of this mm -hmm. and a semicolon, otherwise it doesn't work. Yes, exactly. So now this is like mirror. It goes from zero to one exactly. and back to zero. Yes, exactly. Okay, so now we have learned how to color uh, this, uh, basically the the curve mm -hmm. and how to vary the color mm -hmm. on the curve. Mm -hmm. How about we sample some points yeah. on this curve? Uh -huh. But for, before we do this, why don't we render this on a color buffer? Right. We okay. do have the color buffer. We, the R render target. RT. Ah, yeah. Yeah. So we have to use that. Yeah. And then instead of drawing um, on the main canvas... We can do we something that we have already seen in yeah. one of the episodes, that isolated with target. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there we will... Everything know, that is there, no? Yeah, we yeah, can we, do... We can put everything. Put there. everything. Here. Then we don't need to... <laughs> if you don't want, you can get rid of the... Yeah, the draw thing, because it's past... Automatically because, yeah. is bound to yeah. this. And, and then we can do draw an image. And do we have to... Can we draw this even if it's a 32-bit? Yeah, yeah, we can. We yeah. can. The thing uh, you cannot really do so easily is to save it to a JPEG file. Uh -huh. uh, you need a depth buffer. Depth yeah. buffer. Depth buffer. Yeah. And I think I have to restart the mm -hmm. program. So, is it there? Yes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, let's sample points on this uh, curve. We can sample it directly in, uh, in uh, outside the extend mm -hmm. loop. What do we do? Yeah. Uh, we do points, points. and we use uh, equidistant, right? Uh, what is our curve? Like is curve. it C? C is our curve. Dot. dot equidistance, yes, equidistant positions. And we uh, tell them how many we want, like mm, 20? I'm more gener Four, generous. 50, okay, <laughs> very good. Okay, now we have 50 points on the uh, on the curve. Yeah. What we could do is to draw yeah. something at these points. Mm -hmm. And Do we do it together with inside these? Yeah, we do it together, yeah, we do, we do it inside here. Uh, so points like it's just these circles. Yeah, we can start with that uh, points. Uh, how does that look like? But now we are inheriting the <laughs> shade style. Nice, right? But they are all blue. <laughs> Somehow they are all blue. They look like. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, they are all blue. Huh. I guess they are all blue. It's, I and think it's because of the shades. That, yeah. Huh. Well, they are there. Uh, I want to make them brighter. Maybe. Mm -hmm. How interesting thing we can reset the shade mm -hmm. style. Uh, is it with equals null? Oh, I I'm don't remember. Sure. Let's see. Is it like that? Yeah. 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 yeah because now they are white. Yeah. But now what we could do is to use another shade style. Mm -hmm. Like a gradient, uh -huh. but we have to put the fill to white if we want yeah. to use yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So we could maybe we could we could put uh, the stroke to null. Yeah. And the fill to white. Mm -hmm. And then use a gradient uh, shade style. Yeah. So we create. This is getting longer uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. because the text. F I have the text size a bit large, so you can see. Mm -hmm. But anyway, where are we here? I like it at the end. Uh, uh, what was that? The radial gradient? N radial, gradient. Let, let me think. N, it was called N point ra radial gradient. N point yeah. radial gradient. Mm -hmm. And here we could define first colors and then points. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they are arrays. Mm -hmm. Array of an array of. Mm -hmm. um, I could try. Uh, I wonder. They, I guess they have to match the size. The two arrays. Yeah. Yes, I guess so. Uh, I, I would do something very simple, which is start with transparent y, mm -hmm. white, um, 
then become white and then again transparent white. Okay. Opacify zero. Mm -hmm. And maybe we want those at zero on the middle and one. Mm -hmm. And now we have to use this gradient here. And what does that do? Ooh. We have little yes. ri rings. We have we have little rings. <laughs> yes. And notice that now this is um, happening in the shader. Yeah. So we are not doing something like we did last time that we are creating a new shape yeah. for each of the rings. Yeah. Each of the rings here it's mm, mm, like you know just coloring. Mm -hmm. And indeed, I think there is also transparency at the center. You see. Yeah. I'm oh, trying nice. one thing. Yeah, look, I made rings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's weird because the center is transparent mm -hmm. from 0 to 0 0.6 is mm -hmm. transparent. And then there is it goes to full opacity and then mm -hmm. to transparent again. Mm -hmm. um, what if uh, uh, we could make them wobble? The circle? Yeah, if we change these numbers or, or at least they could be different for every single circle. They could be different from every single, but then you have to put the uh, shade style inside uh, a loop that, you know... I think I just have to here define gradient No, this will points. apply... Ah. And I'm rewriting the... But wait, this will apply to every circle, yeah. though. Then I have to just render the circles one by one. Exactly. That's what I wanted to uh -huh. say. Yeah. And then use the ID to control some yeah. of these... Uh, parameters so points are all the points we're gonna draw and then this has to go inside yeah Oops. Uh -huh. and then and you have to but to circle. bring also shade style gradient inside uh, really shade? because you have to redefine the shade style to apply to that given circle uh-huh if this changes yeah you have to I guess you have to re oh. I will try it. first. Like okay. This. I'm not sure. So ah, because you 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 think that it's pointer attached by reference. Mm, let's, let's let's find see. out. <laughs> let's find out. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna here define a, a kind of a center value, which in, in this case is 0 0.8, mm -hmm. but I want to change that randomly. Mm -hmm. So I would say that our this random value is a random. But it will flicker a lot, though. True. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you, you have to use the index. Or to keep track of or it, or the uh, simplex, <laughs> or the simplex, yeah, yeah, or the simplex noise, yes, yes, yes. Let's say yeah, it's simplex noise. Simplex yeah. uh, zero yeah. it. Yeah. So now we have a random number that depends on the, yeah. the position. Yeah. This number is between minus one and plus one. Yeah. But I want. Yeah, I think you can map it. Or to the, uh, uh, multiply by zero five. Yeah, that's a yeah, simple way. But I want to show there is map. Okay, okay. I think yeah, before and after. So I can say that before is this range. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, let me put this in another line. And after uh, we what do we want? Zero uh, one. I don't know. Zero oh, two oh. and zero eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then I can say this is gonna be R. Mm -hmm. This is going to be R minus 0 0.2, mm -hmm. and this is going to be R plus 0 0.2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they are smaller changing. and bigger. Yeah, they are smaller and bigger. That's true. But what happens if we use simple a two D a three D simplex, uh -huh. and then we move the other the third coordinate with time? Oh, <laughs> itx, ity seconds. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> they re reduce a bit the seconds so that they get smaller, and maybe increase. Ah, inc what do you mean seconds? Like yeah, multiply. Ah, slow, yeah, yeah. slower yeah. animation. Exactly. Yeah. And maybe increase a little bit, a little bit uh, the circle uh, radius. Ah uh, yeah, double. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe it's too much. Uh, uh, maybe it's too much. Maybe fifteen. Uh, one one thing. Do you notice there's blurriness? There is blurriness. The blurriness yeah. comes from this range. Mm -hmm. So if I would reduce this, yeah, uh, then it's going to be less Crisper, blurry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, But I liked it more before. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you mean blurry? Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Blurry, and uh, but smaller. One. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is really really nice. I huh. like it. It's a nice effect. Um, and now we have basically rendered all. Ah, you know what we could do also maybe? Uh, can we make these uh, 
I think no, I think this is harder than I thought because uh, we cannot make this move, the circle moves along the curve. You think? I think I think that we have to work with the parameter. Uh -huh. We have, you know, to we should use the coordinate along the curve yeah, yeah, yeah. and then move it. Uh -huh. Okay. What we could do is regenerate the whole curve mm -hmm. on every frame and uh, instead of this random, we also use simplex to generate the values. So we would have a wobbling ah, organic shape. But then we would have the whole curve to wobble. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. yeah, let's try. Yeah. So we have to move C inside these two. Then we have to set the parameter, the length on every frame. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have to calculate the points. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I move here. We now we have created the curve. We mm -hmm. have the length. Mm -hmm. Now we will set the length on the shader mm -hmm. after calculating it. So our shader is mm -hmm. called. Does it have a name? Effect. Effect. Effect uh, parameter. So we uh, have set the. Mm -hmm. this. And then we need also points. The points we sample mm -hmm. on every. After creating the curve. Yep. And now we what want else? to change simplex instead yeah, of. Yeah. Uh, because if we if I now save, it's gonna now be yeah, crazy. Yeah. Flicker, flicker a lot. Yeah. So like, yeah. So here we have random numbers between fifty. And wait, what about the angles? Ah, so we're gonna keep the. Yeah, we're gonna ang keep the same the angles, angles we keep yeah. while we change this yeah. to be numbers between fifty and uh, three hundred. Yeah. So sim. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another seed, and we can use what the angle, for example, yeah, the angle. It yeah. and seconds mm -hmm. times 0 0.1. What does this do? Yeah, oh. I think because it's very small, it's yeah. between uh, minus one and one. So you first have to convert this to zero and one. Uh, and I, then I forgot because we had numbers before with 50 and, and 300. 300. Yeah. So where is our simplex here? Mm -hmm. uh, this would be 50. Well, actually, we want the center. I think it's 200 and whatever mm -hmm. times something like this. Mm -hmm. Let me think. Uh, this would go from uh, 100 to 300, 200. right? Yeah. It's OK. Maybe it's. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ooh. and you know what? The flickering happens because mm -hmm. the, we are when we use the noise here. Mm -hmm. uh, these are in pixels, ah. so it's too. It makes too big of a change. But okay. if we multiply this by a small number, mm -hmm. and I, I have to move this in view. Yeah, so I think. Still, yeah. even maybe more. No, subtle. because this this can ah. be even smaller. Yeah, Zero sorry, five. I. Yeah. Miss that one. Yeah. Oh, oh this is nice. Very organic. It's no? very organic. Very nice. Uh, and I uh, let me think about. Okay, no. So we are rendering all of these uh, on uh, a color buffer. Right. But nothing would stop us mm. to use this color buffer and use it as a texture mm -hmm. for some custom-made shade style. Yeah on which we can operate and do stuff. Like, for <laughs> instance, let's try to do... Ah, this is what we are going to do. Let's try to do uh, trails of this. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's first create a color buffer co called previous. Well, previous is color buffer exactly. with height. With and height. And put it also at float, the color type. Um, mm. Type. Type. Yeah, uh, color type float right. 32. Type 32? No, <laughs> no. float 32. Okay, yeah. super. So now let me think what we can do. We can do the following thing. Uh, on the first render pass, mm -hmm. okay, go down. Uh, copy the content of the color buffer zero. Yes. To this previous, uh, to the previous buffer. In this line? Yeah. So was it like copy... Is this color buffer to uh, zero copy to um, uh, previous? I think you can do it like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so basically, we have copied the the previous buffer, 
So what I want to do now, uh, um, just a sec, I want to, uh, uh, we need another pass of the, another render target pass. And you want to do trails? Yes. That's... But what if we don't, well, very tempor temporarily, we could just not do clear? No, but this or... will, uh, no, 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 but this will not uh, reduce them though. Yeah. I want them to do trails that disappear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is this is an uh, an idea, but I don't want to do this. No, that's cool. <laughs> yes. Uh, so what we can do, eh, what we can do before drawing this, yeah, we can draw previous. Uh huh. You know, we clear the screen. Yeah. And then we draw the previous uh, frame. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, with image. Uh, uh, is this uh, what I want to do? No, this is not what I. Uh, let me think. This is not what I want to do. Uh, ah no! You want to slowly fade out? No, I I think I know what I want. I, think uh -huh. I, I know what I want. <laughs> he knows. Uh, I know. <laughs> so uh, create another uh, frame color buffer and uh, call wait, it current. So I delete this. Yeah, I delete it. Okay. Create another frame and call it current. Uh, you mean color, color buffer? buffer. Uh, call it so current. we have previous and current. Yeah, exactly. Well, current. Was there a way of copying? Uh, cop like. There was a way of copying a color buffer features. Like ah, I don't remember how okay. to do that. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, yes, copy paste. <laughs> like, yes, which is also copying, but <laughs> <laughs> we uh, height height and type. Yeah, uh, float, float thirty two. Thirty two. Yes. Now instead when instead of the, after the first pass of the render target, copy to current, not previous. To current. Exactly. Yeah. Now we instanti instantiate a new uh, the drawer render, yeah. like drawer dot isolated uh -huh. with target, yeah, and we pass to the shade style two variables, previous and current, mm -hmm. right? Current we show it the full color, okay. Previous we multiply by a coefficient. Uh -huh. The outcome of this will be copied to previous. Okay. Okay. So let's do this. <laughs> so. First, we need drawer dot isolated dot random. Uh, sorry, dot so render, render, render target. RT. Okay. So in here, you have to clear the screen. Uh, clear, transparent. Uh, yeah, like yeah. Then fill with white. Uh, then why not clear white? Uh, because I want to draw on the rectangle. Uh -huh. I need to draw on the. Ah, you mean set the fill color? Yeah, the fill. Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. Set see, the fill color. Yes. Fill white. And then no stroke. So stroke. No stroke. Set oh. to null. <laughs> uh, yeah. Perfect. Now let's set the shade style mm -hmm. to be equal to a custom shade style. Uh, shade style. Yes. Perfect. The fra with the fragment transform. Fragment transform. Mm -hmm. And then we need some coordinates, mm -hmm. like the bound coordinates. So uh, back to chord equals C underscore, uh, yeah, bound position. Bound. Was it all together? No, it was bound, uh, bound yeah. position. Like uh, bound position. Bound, bound yeah. position dot X, Y. Okay, perfect. Then flip one of the coordinates. So chord dot y equal my one minus, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Very good. This should be the case. Then we have two. Uh, we can have we have two colors: mm -hmm. color A and color B. Uh -huh. Color A use the texture that we will call main. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're gonna sample a texture. And exactly. Same for B. Exactly. So maybe maybe A could be like current and B should be previous uh -huh. so that we remember which one of the two. Yeah. Okay. So we from texture uh, current we we sample from yeah like we uh, need two parameters. Yeah. Let's call uh, the um, uh, I don't know. Okay. Give the same names. Yeah. Uh, current yeah. on prev. Exactly. And this is gonna be current. Current. And the other one color is color buff. No, you don't need. Ah, it's, yeah, it's already a color buff. Okay, okay. I'm free. free. Use. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the texture, the first texture, we will sample from picker. Yeah, and chords. Pref. Chords. 
and core. And now to x uh, underscore fill, we will pass cur. Uh, we're gonna mix or yeah, yeah. I mean, I, the, way, or... the way I do it in general is that I pass cur and then I pass prev with the coefficient. Okay. Like uh, so, this is first current. Yes. Uh -huh. and, and then plus. Uh -huh. Plus zero dot say nine dot previous. Um, times. Yeah, yeah. Times period. Times Pref. period. But only the RGB or the alpha also. Uh, in general, I pass the, only the RGB. Uh -huh. So if you change vector of current, because I could do, yeah, I could do this in two lines. Yeah. Okay. And then x field dot RGB oh, plus right. equals prev dot RGB, RGB times zero nine. Perfect. Okay. So now what we need, we need a rectangle inside the drawer isolated. Uh, here. here rectangle. rectangle. The whole bounds, so drawer dot bounds. Bounds. Yes, and then we copy these to previous. One, no, no, outside, outside. Once rendered. Once, when it's rendered, we say this now is the previous frame. Yeah. So you see that this thing will slowly delete mm -hmm. the part that are not written. You know. Yeah. Okay, it's easier to. But then we have to show the previous buffer. Okay. Uh, one second. We we have now this in R T color buffer. We have to copy color yeah. buffer zero. Mm -hmm. Copy to previous. Previous. And then we can show previous. And then we show previous. And something should appear. <laughs> I hope. Yeah, there's some world. Look. I, I wonder why the gray. Why the gray? That's a good question. Well, that's nice. Uh, Maybe it's also because at the beginning I clear to right, right, clear, zero. clear, clear to yes. Whoa, it's like like fiery. Yes, look, uh, it's pretty cool. Amazing movement. I really like it. And actually, actually, we can also illustrate what happens when you don't have uh, flow thirty-two. Yeah. What I suspect is that you will have artifacts. Yeah. Around. Let's yeah. see if this is the case. Wow, I, that's very cool. Um. Was the default in something? I think uh, I can look at if I control click here. Yeah. U int eight. Yeah, U int eight. Yes. That's the default. Yeah. And all in all these cases, no. Yes. Here and here. It might not happen, but sometimes you have some weird artifacts that you cannot. You know, it doesn't clear clears yeah. very well. It's also hard because our monitor here is <laughs> yeah. not, not the best. But also you see that the it effect looks is a bit, it looks different. Yeah. It looks less, you know, apart it looks very saturated because yeah. there is no, it's compressed. Com yeah. Compressed because of the limited. Yeah. Like if we put back to floor 32. You see? Yeah. I, has, I can perceive more has, colors. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. And what we can do, of course, by varying the coefficient, we uh, like the 0 0.9 that we put in the second uh, pass, mm -hmm. we can just, you know, uh, like uh, make the trail trails long-lived or short-lived. Mm -hmm. I want to change the color of the circles. Mm -hmm. Because white is too... White is too white. Yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking, I don't know, there was also light cyan. Was there light cyan? What? How does this look like? Uh, I don't like it very much. No. Right. There's one that is. It's a very pretty movement, though, right? Yeah. Because. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm surprised that the code runs. <laughs> <laughs> a blanche almond. I like that color. Okay. I just like there's these colors which are almost like white, but yeah. they have a, yeah, yeah. a tone. Ooh, yeah. Let's try to increase the coefficient of uh, you know the zero dot nine. The feedback. The f I mean, this is technically a feedback, uh -huh. right? So here, Where let's put we? ninety five. Uh -huh. See what happens. Ah, so it will leave yeah. longer trails or nice. <laughs> it's really nice, actually. Yeah. Uh, 
it's a really nice effect maybe one thing one could do if you know like in the one could control the maximum value and trying to find one of those functions that you know like the, how to say they compress better the color so mm -hmm. ooh. <laughs> we're just trying with larger yeah, radius yeah, yeah, yeah. but then these circles are probably too the stroke is too heavy can i so make stroke weight yeah weight like make make it thinner if i would put one one is the oh, oh, still very but put visible. zero dot one yeah i think it's just because it's the accumulation ac accumulating yeah 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 but uh it's pretty cool yeah it's really really uh, cool. The, the, we're using this maybe the thing, maybe the gradient. thing that we can do is the, instead of here having maximum, yeah. have it at zero, zero dot one on the center. Yeah, yeah. Y Even then, it's very visible. Yeah, now, yeah. now it starts to be. Now it starts to be zero point two, maybe. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> this is very nice, no? Yeah. It's weird. It's, and we are also drawing the curve on the back. Yeah. So if we the curve, we make it a bit more and, transparent. And you notice the the curve looks like at variable thickness because yes. some parts move more than others. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned the curve also different color. Yeah, like the the uh, curve maybe to make it more transparent. So where we do we draw? Here's the contour. Uh, yeah, but the but it has a um, white. It, yeah, but it ah yeah. We can, yeah, we can uh, do it here. I also want some, I don't know. Some but this gets over overwritten by the uh, shade style. Ah, eh? uh, yeah. So this stroke is, ah, uh, yeah, doesn't make any. Doesn't, but if we go to the shade style, yeah, we can change, you know, there. Where is the? Upstairs, I think, I think it's in the uh, program side here. here. Maybe we can change the alpha uh -huh. here. Yeah. And make it yeah. more transparent if we do. X stroke dot alpha is zero point two. I don't know if you're gonna notice. Also because it's accumulating. Well yeah, I think now it yeah, starts but, to be but now, now it's kind of yellow. Yeah, exactly. Now it's kind of yellowish. Yeah. And uh but yeah, you can see that I think this is a very cool effect. Yeah. But you can see what we did. We already have two passes. Yeah. Like you render somewhere and then you do post-production mm -hmm. in a certain... I mean, it's not technically post-production because it's a feedback loop, yeah. so it's still yeah. part of the system, yeah. but you do this in two steps. Mm -hmm. You first do your geometry, and then you render it, yeah. and then the rendering becomes only pixel material, yeah. only color material. All yeah. the geometry is gone, mm -hmm. and then you work with the pixel. Yeah. But it's, pretty, it's a pretty cool... Uh, it's a pretty cool effect also because you, you see this additive, cool. uh, yeah, you see this additive effect. And actually, I think that the thing you, we could do is to have this uh, circle, the, this radius thing, uh -huh. say, uh, var uh, you know, change in the same way we did before. Before we created this toggle variable, mm -hmm. one, that was randomly changing from one to zero. Yeah. And if you do it here, you can control the radius. And you can see that this thing, you know, will increase, decrease, and do. Yeah, I think we should leave it for the students. I think we should <laughs> leave it for the students, but I think it's a pretty nice. Oh, uh, look at this! It's like a ghost. Of... Yeah, I think it's a pretty nice effect that I can imagine using for, you know, maybe driven by music. Yeah. Or you know, for uh, sort of these. It's very ethereal. Yeah. Also, as I think that's a great touch. The fact that the contour is not all. Uniform color, but yeah. it has a blue side. Exactly, and, I, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it gives it this kind of uh, I don't know character. This fact that yeah, it's changing color. But yeah, I think you're right. We can uh, wrap it up yeah. here. There is a lot of food for thought. Um, yeah, using uh, as you can see, once you open the box of. Uh, using shaders and GLS GLSL, mm. and you bring them in your workflow, they allow. A lot of, I mean, extra pal palette for expression, yeah. I would mm -hmm. say. Okay, so from us is everything. So yeah. hopefully we'll see you in the next yeah. series and episodes. <laughs> Bye. See you then. Bye-bye. Ciao.